Mr. Foibles has been out on a journey to the end of the drive because we all know this is a time when we stay at home. He's been testing out his new invention his telepathic binocular hat. Don't think it works. He, he likes to show off, you know. There's a time where you just want to let everyone know what you're about, what you do. Uh, it's a way of expressing yourself. <laughs> well, it's, um, it's a labour of love. Um, I spend a lot of time, almost a amount of time, in this studio and uh, I'm collecting pieces of material. I can half complete some things, as you've seen behind me. They're waiting for another piece of material to come and and make the whole thing work. So I, I, uh, I put so many hours into it. I couldn't really make a living out of it, I just do it for the joy. Um, I find it's a great meditation practice just to focus the mind, keep my uh, attention fixed on the movement of the machines, the smell of the wood, the, there's something quite magical about the whole process. And I have times when it's difficult. I don't have the same kind of creative uh, urges. It's not doesn't come so easily. Other times I'm obsessed. I focus and just keep going until I got something done. <clears throat> Trouble is, of course, rarely gets anything finished. Such a perfectionist, really. And to me, I never finish anything. Nothing's finished. We're just all part of a flow, yes, flowing. And that, that's, that's good for him. I think he, you know, he needs that. We all need a bit of um, kind of acknowledgement and praise, and and, uh, and it's a nice way of meeting people. the simple oh, items of oh, course oh, and they would all knit together um, some of them were quite beautiful yeah, sort of spidery like web patterns on them simple item arachnoidium i think oh, it's oh, called so, yes, and others fish. have sort of red yeah, fleshy yeah. leaves some are quite large some are tiny and they eventually rise up to flower and when they do that that rosette Of course, um, this period, especially with the virus lurking outside the door, I I have this um, quite serious lung damage, um, and I've been 
finding it difficult to breathe for the last mm, 12 years now and at the best of times so you know I, I received uh, let letters from the NHS and from now from the government saying that they want to shield me keep me away and I've got to be away from people for some time weeks and weeks and uh, for me it's the idea that there's you know if I catch this thing it will certainly wipe me out so death is just so close and and in a way it brings me very much into the present just that knowledge you know every time I I wake up in the morning there's this and it, I am still here a couple of times I've woken up in the morning with a dry throat and hot and sweaty and a bit of a cough and thinking well you know heart flutters a little bit of fear uncertainty and it passes by and you know, I have my mother to look after so gets me going gets me up gets me back into the groove and then of course you know there are plenty of things I could entertain myself with here and uh, but I guess in the meantime I, I'm spending a lot more time just appreciating the loveliness of this little garden um, I love the little tools in the workshop the little steampunk machines the bluebells growing the bird song and when I'm not looking for anything else this is just amazing beautiful I really choose this then you know, never never gets better than this really doesn't get any better than this Yeah, sometimes people ask me why why the reliquary. The reliquary to me is um is like a a container um, where we house something we and something that we restore and re raise up something precious. You put something precious, you case it, and then you lift it up. You raise it up. So the reliquary is is uh, something which. I see a lot in Asia, and um, I just felt it would be a nice. It's a, it's a sad, a certain sacred, um, very personal, quite private feel about the reliquary. You know, I've had a lot of practice doing this sort of thing and spent a number of years uh, practicing within a, a monastic discipline which entailed spending sometimes several months on my own in a little hut in the forest. Um, so the, my little souvenir from Thailand and I come in here quite regularly if I feel I'd like to meditate for a bit and it brings me back into that place and reminds me very much of the community the uh the monks and uh, nuns that i've i've um learned from spiritual brothers and companions and facing up to a, a shrine and many of the little m memorabilia i have in this little room here little place it's like a little sanctuary come here Settle mind.
I guess over the years when I I recognise most is how important it is just to be be kind to myself, be uh, gentle, not to to give myself a lot of space. The crazy nature, the restless nature, the impatience, the artist who's the perfectionist, never at rest. I can be kind to that, gentle with it, allow it to be. You know, the different aspects of oneself is all perfect in themselves. When we learn to love ourselves and be kind to them, to nurture and find ways that we can care for them, then life is just a party, really. We all get on so well. Well, it's all very good being wise, sensible, but not always. <laughs> people bringing things to the house, little anonymous parcels, people helping, you know, I don't have to go shopping, and all these things I'm very, I feel nurtured and very loved and blessed and at the same time and I can see that things, everything I have here, we have a lovely garden, a lovely opportunity to be building, making things, and I you know, take a great deal of joy in creating stuff. And yet, in the end, I recognise none of it is really mine. There come a time when I can pass them on, I can, they will find another owner. This house, everything I have is only here on loan. Even my relationship, my dear mum, my brother, my friends, they're only on loan to me, they're temporary. And when I reflect in this way, I have an amazing sense of gratitude and blessing. Because I know they're not going to be here for long. I'm going to this is, every moment seems so much more precious and magical, valuable. And having very little sense of making plans for a long-term future, you know, and I'm very much in, in living in this moment, then um, there's, it's a very easy, I just feel very grateful and like to cultivate the sense of everything being finished. It's over, nothing to do, just to dwell there. Uh, sure enough, you know, there's invitations to go to shows, events, um, in the world of steampunk <laughs> and uh, places where uh, markets and exhibitions where the woodwork is exhibited and people show a great deal of interest in that and surprisingly um, quite willing to pay a lot of money for it. And that they're, they're all ideas though, they're thoughts. But what is right now is a sense of being very complete. I don't need to do anything but be here, listen to the birds, enjoy the colours, the, the leaves, sun coming through the leaves, sounds, body still breathing. Quite well. What more is there? Does he really know what he's talking about? Well, one thing I know for sure his heart's in the right place. <laughs> Just um, <clears throat> trying to sit still for a while, to being still. Uh, is very much a contradiction, isn't it? Because the body is a twitchy, restless thing. So they don't naturally stay still. And even if you found the most comfortable chair in the world, you wouldn't hack it for long. 
So nature in its bind is nature, you know, is its its nature is to be restless. It doesn't. It's always moving. It's eager to find, to hunt, looking for something. It's the world of nature, and there's no escaping it. So spending time in solitude, much the same. You know, I can notice the mind will decide. You know, oh, yeah, I can finish this project. I could do this. Do the blah blah blah. And there's always something. I've never. I've hardly ever experienced boredom for years. There's always things I can engage in. And um, boredom arises really when, when uh, I'm not. I'm, there's a sort of sense of being unhappy with where I am. Boredom is a sense of not wanting this. But when I choose this and start from the sense of okay, you know, this, everything's fine. I've got everything I need here. Don't need anything else. This is all I have, this is all I need to, to be able to maintain this body and life. It's all, all here and perfectly together, then I can play. There's just options, dozens of options. Chocolate biscuit. Yeah. Nice cold it. drink. Thank you very much. Lovely. You got your phones. Have you had any calls yet? No, nothing. No? Okay, well. Sometimes you have to initiate them. <laughs> no, I don't want any calls. I'm fine, thank you. Okay. Good. Just fine. I've had a peaceful sort of day. Mm. Yeah. yeah.